Hello my lovely little weasels, in today's video I'm going to be covering an extremely good Saren Prime or Saren build where you're going to be fully armor shipping enemies, you're going to be killing them with toxin clouds, and you're going to be having infinite amounts of energy without needing arcane energize, incredible if not unkillableness with the amount of survivability that you have and also long lasting nuking damage. So without any further delays let's quickly gloss over the abilities, spores being the first one allowing you to basically put on a spore on an enemy, destroy that spore, it spreads around, does gross damage and this is your main armor shipping ability. Second will ability is gonna be molt. You molt your skin, move faster, uh, the enemies target the molt more than you and it does toxin damage as well. Now. This ability is going to be the one that is going to be very, very crucial in this video. But Toxin Lash is her third ability that is also very useful, giving us toxin damage on top of everything else and automatically popping spores on enemies already affected by them. Miasma being the fourth ability, doing viral damage and spreading the spores, but we're going to throw this out for Lycan's Hunt that's going to give us health orbs on our melee kills and in turn going to give us energy orbs with a mod called Equilibrium, but we'll get into that a little bit later. But this ability can be changed up for a couple other ones, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. First of all, I want to cover the secondary of choice. The secondary of choice is the Epitaph. We have base damage here, and this is mostly for priming and also shield gaining with Augur Seeker and Pact. We do have viral damage here as well, with secondary encumber spawning other random status effects. Now, we do have the main, I guess this is sort of the main part of the show, the dual Icor in Karnin. Now, that is the melee weapon of choice. Why this one? Well, the first evolution basically gives you toxic clouds that adapt to your damage on your melee weapon and also scale off of your melee weapon and give you extra melee damage, sprint speed and parkour velocity which is very good. But that is the first evolution, what are the other three? Well, the second one is gonna increase your damage by 90 and I'm gonna gain 5 additional combo on targets affected by toxin. The third one is gonna give us 0.6 range and the last one is gonna give us and increase our status chance by 34%. So what does this all end up being? Well, this build right here. Now. Keeping in mind that it does scale off mods, now you cannot increase the range of the cloud, but what you can do is increase the melee reach of your weapon with, as you can see, opportunities reach and primed reach. Now you can put out prime reach and put ordinary reach, opportunity reach it will give you 3 meters and then prime reach in my situation will give me another additional 2.5, that's a total of 7.9 meters which is going to cover a lot of enemies. Now. Toxic Cloud, as you may see, I do have only Toxin damage. In my situation, in my testing, I've tested out Viral and Toxin. Toxin seems to be the better option, but that is me. If your opinion may differ, leave it in the comment section below. I'll read it and I guess we'll... Yeah, there you go. Uh, I'm using Prime Sure Footed because it... Uh, pressure Point, sorry, not Sure Footed. Uh, pressure Point because it does scale off of that. Also, Faction Mods and Elemental Mods uh, alongside Critical Damage and Chance Mods. Now, the Toxin Cloud itself has a base critical chance of 0 and a multiplier of 1, so keeping that in mind, uh, that or the enemies are going to be fully armor stripped anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but if you don't have the prime mods, don't use them, use the base variants. Uh, Mail exposure is very good and doesn't have to be maxed out, this will give us additional corrosive damage, armor stripping the enemies even more, so I think we have a lot of corrosive. Now, you might be saying, why are you using Prime Reach and Opportunities Reach if the cloud doesn't really change? Well, the cloud doesn't, but when you kill an enemy whilst you're in, in your incarnate form, the more enemies that you kill, the higher the chances of cloud spawning, and you can reach further with your weapon, meaning that the clouds can reach further as well. So, a quick little explanation. Now, a primary recommendation is the Torrid. If you're going to use the Torrid in Karnin, you basically don't need anything else. Uh, just keeping that in mind, but that is another, I guess, shout out for that. Now that we covered the weapons, let's cover the Saren build. The Saren build, we utilize Brief Respite and Augur Reach, and also the two previously mentioned Augur mods. We also have Adaptation for Survivability, Equilibrium, and Arcane Blessing, and Mold Reconstruct. Now, Mold Reconstruct is going to give us health corresponding to the percentage of energy spent on abilities. Brief Respite will return shields also on the same principle, spent energy spent on, uh, of course, the abilities. So with Brief Respite and Mold Reconstruct, we're gaining oh, and actually activating Molt, which is going to be, as I said, our main uh, shield gating and Mold Reconstruct ability. Activating our Molt is going to give us health 
and it's also going to give us shields. So this is your main survivability ability, survivability ability. Hello everyone, sorry, I forgot to say that in the build that Molt actually cleanses you status effects. So Adaptation, switch that out for Rolling Guard, and then what you're going to do is change out Arcane Blessing for Molt Augmented, and what you're going to get is survivability and even more power strength. So sorry for that little, uh, yes, misunderstanding. Uh, hope you enjoyed the rest of the video. Uh, editing Gaming Weasel is out. Goodbye. Uh, but we also do have, uh, as I said, a stretch for range. For uh, strength, we have Omer Intensify and Transient Fortitude. Yeah, this can be changed out. Uh, you can put Transient Fortitude, uh, I guess, Blind Damage instead of it. So that is personally dependent on you. And Omer Intensify, if you have Ordinary Intensify, then use that one. Yes, Prime Shurative is here. I know someone wants, someone's saying it in the background. Use Handspring or, or Ordinary Sure Footed. You're not going to get 100%, but at least close to it, if nothing else. Equilibrium, like Ants Hunt, incredibly good. Gives you loads and and loads of health and energy. I have never ran out of energy with this build, not even close. But we'll talk about the different combination a little bit later on. Arcane Blessing, Molt Augmented, either one you choose, it's your option. And that is the Warframe, but we do have Archon Shorts. One of us giving us 25% casting speed, the other two being green one, they're gonna be giving us two extra corrosive stacks, so a total of 14, and that means fully armor shipping enemies. And another additional one giving us 10% uh, additional corrosive damage. Now, if I had one, instead of the blue Archon Shard that I already have giving me 225 health, I would put it there to increase my Toxin damage, but sadly I don't. So if you have that, put that in there. You're going to be doing even more damage than I am and probably killing enemies much faster than I am, but there you go. What this is basically going to look like with this Warframe and this melee weapon is going to be like this. You activate your incarnate form, and then you basically kill a couple of enemies, activate spores, Toxic Lash, Molt as well, and like Ants Hunt, uh, apply with your epitaph, and then you basically kill everything. The clouds follow your spores, or you know, your spores follow the clouds, it doesn't really matter. You're still armor shipping enemies and killing them on Toxin. Uh, so that is, I guess, the main point of the build. Now, what abilities can Lycan's Hunt exchange for? Uh, any sort of damage ability, Roar, Eclipse, Zota's Whisper, or even Nourish could be pretty good here. If you're gonna use Nourish, then I would recommend you use the Panzer Wopophila with the Sin Deconstruct mod, I'll show you that in just a little bit. And the Focus Cool that I also recommend is gonna be Neramon or Mother Eye, depending on which one you wanna use. Uh, in Neramon, I primarily utilize Power Spike uh, to let my combo decay instead of fully disappearing and opening Slam. Slamming with my Operator is basically gonna Kind of giving gonna be giving me an increased chance of gaining another combo count plus the other ways of gaining combo count were pretty much set at being 12x the whole time doing incredible amounts of damage now what does the panzer build look like Consider we talked about it that much uh, this is the build that it looks like keep in mind that mod activation i uh, guess uh, priority is very important here so the uh, the first mod that activates is the top right and going to the uh, far left same goes for the second row down there. We do have Tenacious Bond, Vicious Bond, and Tandem Bond. Now, why do we have all three of these? First of all, Tenacious Bond is going to increase our final critical damage multiplier 1.2 times. Then Contagion Bond is basically when our companion kills an enemy affected by a status effect, it has a chance of spreading to another enemy, so toxic, even better. And then tandem, we gain extra uh, combo when our enemy kills someone or attacks someone with its melee weapon. So that is basically it. Now, this can be changed up a little bit. As I said, it's Warframe. Builds can change and vary uh, depending on the Warframe player. But an also another amazing pet is the Simita Kavat. The build looks like this. I personally choose either one. It really depends on which one I'm playing. Uh, both work uh, really nice and either one with Cindy Construct is going to be very good, especially the Panzer uh, with Nourish because of course, it's going to drop extra health orbs, and with Equilibrium being in there, or you can even take it out, you're going to be gaining a lot more energy with Nourish as well, so that is another way you can utilize that uh, there. And basically, that is actually it. Uh, just activate everything, and have everything active. Move around, kill everything, activate your second ability, survive, and that's basically it. Uh, I think I have nothing else to say here. I, if you guys do, leave it in the comment section down below. Very interested in hearing that. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, do leave a like, uh, do subscribe for more content. I'll see you guys on the next one. It's been the Gaming Weasel over and out.